Banks are running out of money. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you heard me right. Yes, I'm gonna get into this video because it is super scary. I read like all of these articles, I've studied this, and I have so much to share with you about this that I just really gotta get into it. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big step. She can fix that. Let's fix that. I'm gonna share with you a simple step-by-step -step explanation on what is happening in this market and why banks are running out of money. I'm gonna share with you my biggest insider secret on how you can benefit from the banks running out of money. And I'm gonna share with you the biggest, best trap that you need to avoid. So you probably already know how banks make money, but let me quickly explain how most banks work. Obviously, we open up checkings or savings accounts as normal consumers, and we put our money into the bank. They give us an account, and each time we get paid and we put money in the bank, the bank then takes that money and they loan it out to other consumers. They may even loan some of it back to you when it's all pulled together for things like auto loans, mortgages, credit cards, personal loans, and other type of investment lending. These are what most banks invest in and this is how they make money. They pay you interest on the money that you receive or they pay you no interest on the money you receive in some cases and then they lend that money out to others charging interest and making a profit. This is how most banks work. But do you know that banks also make money not only with the interest that they charge lending money, they also invest money as well. Most banks have their own portfolios of money that they've invested and they offer ways for consumers to take advantage of those investments. For example, Chase Bank, for example, may own actual real estate. They may actually even own portfolios of stocks or bonds and things like that, securities. They actually invest their money into other businesses and other investments. This is one of the streams of incomes for banks. So they have the two major ways. They obviously have the lending that they do with the money that you deposit, but then they also have their own profits that they reinvest and monies that you've deposited that they do investments with. So this is how banks make money and I'm going to share with you why they're running out of money because something has definitely changed. So now let's talk about what's going on in this market because it is crazy. So in another video I'm going to share with you and I'll explain the whole thing but 99% of all mortgages in the U.S. right now are less than 6% interest rate. Let me say that again. 99% of all of the mortgages currently in America, the sellers, the borrowers, the person that owns the home, their mortgage interest rate is less than 6%. 99%, that is completely unheard of and that is a new thing that has never happened before in our economy when adjusted for inflation, of course. So what we are seeing now is that we have all of these people that own mortgages and their rates are less than 6% and current interest rates on mortgages are nearly 7%. So that is a really big gap. We're starting to see that many people are not wanting to take out as many new mortgages because the mortgage interest rates were so low and we almost got like really used to that environment. Additionally, because interest rates are higher, people can't buy as much home as they could two years ago. So they can't even afford as much house as they used to. So for example, maybe in 2020, they could have gotten a $300,000 home with a $2,000 payment. But now that only gets them a $200,000 home and there really just isn't too many of those properties available or the competition for those lower price homes is immense and is really hard to find a property that you can afford. So when you start to combine these two things, we have a real issues that banks are facing that I'm going to explain to you in just a second. This creates a situation where banks are actually losing money. Let me kind of explain to you, not that they're losing money every day, but kind of on paper, they look like they are. Let me explain. Like I said earlier, banks invest money. They have their own investments. And in many cases, their investments are portfolios of loans. So let's just use the example, a portfolio of mortgage loans. So say they take a thousand mortgage loans and that's just one portfolio and they've invested in that. And that portfolio is yielding a certain amount of return each year. Maybe I'm just gonna use a round number. It's a silly low round number. Let's just say it's $1 million, okay? But now with mortgage interest rates being much higher, portfolios have mortgages with much higher interest rates, which makes them much more valuable. So you may have a portfolio with interest, like I said, those a thousand loans, but those interest rates on those loans are 7%. 
So that portfolio is actually worth more than the portfolio of the mortgages that at 3% interest rate. Do you get that? I'm gonna put a little illustration on the screen so you can see that. So if you have 3% earning here and 7%, this 7% pile is worth more. It is more valuable. Investors will pay more because the yields, the returns are gonna be much higher because the interest rates are higher. You get that. So now we have a situation where banks have lots of portfolios of loans with really low interest rates and those are gonna get value down, like a markdown in value. I won't get into nerd out on you too much. I wanna keep this as simple as possible so everyone understands. So if those now were a million dollar package and then they say, well, man, because of the market, these are now only worth $750,000 and these 7% mortgages, instead of being worth a million, they're really worth 2 million because they're so much more valuable than these. So when you actually do the paper, a balance sheet for a bank, they would have a situation where if they ever had the, this portfolio of loans that they had to sell or they have to sell a portion of them, or those people started to default, they would be in a really bad situation. And that's what a lot of banks are facing right now when they're looking at their actual, the value of their investments. They're having to write down the value because interest rates have changed and the market has changed so much that those assets, those portfolios, are not actually worth as much as they thought they were. And they're in a situation where they actually would be at a loss. The cash that they have on hand, the capital, minus those investments, being marked down as a loss would create a situation where banks are insolvent. Literally, it would be a situation on paper or if they ever had to do this in real life, they would not have enough money to cover their losses. Okay, and that's the situation that we are in right now. Whoa, this information is amazing and I wanna keep making you these videos and sharing the content that you love. Give me a super thanks and let me know if you are enjoying this content so I can keep making more content that you love and enjoy. When you send me a super thanks, I know that this is the content that you want and I just keep making more of it. Send me a super thanks and let me know. Okay, back to this episode. So now let's get to the fun part because like I said, the banks are running out of money or they could be running out of money. It hasn't actually happened yet, but I'm gonna keep a really close eye on this and I may make another video if anything changes. But I need you to understand everything that I just explained because this is always how it is. Whether rates are up or down, you need to understand what I just taught you and it is really simple to understand because the part that you really wanna know is that those properties are being marked down in value. It's called a discount. And discounts are really good for investors. You like distress. When you are an investor and you are looking to buy things and spend and invest, if something is sold at a discount, then that is a good thing for you. You want that. You want to buy a million dollar property for $500,000. You want to get loans that are performing, that you know are making money at a discount. And so there's opportunity because distressed assets are our biggest opportunity. Okay, let me say that again. Distressed assets are an investor's biggest opportunity. That is how I got rich. People losing their homes, people in foreclosure, bankruptcy, convalescent home, if they got relocated, people in distress is how I got wealthy. So watch this situation really closely because this is be the situation where you may be able to get stocks at a discount, mutual funds, different investments that banks may be selling off. And so if banks come into a situation where they need that cash flow or they're forced to sell off some of those assets, that would be the perfect opportunity for you to get rich. Wow, I have an amazing opportunity for you to get all of my books absolutely free, even this one. I literally have four books, one on real estate, one on business, one on Airbnb business, and one on Toro. My Millionaire Secrets Collection, you can get all four of these books absolutely free. You just cover the shipping. Go to noellesbookoffer.com and pick up all four of these books so you can learn all of the secrets that I've poured into these books. It includes scripts, templates, graphs, charts, and so much more to take you to the next level. I literally started from my parents' basement when I was bankrupt, broke, and had no money, and I was able to do all of these things and more. So you can do the exact same thing too. Go to noellesbookoffer.com. I just wanna make sure that you have all of the resources, all of the tools, and all of the knowledge that you need to be successful. This is Noelle, to your success.